चलो बाजी welcome to all we'll just start in few seconds okay i welcome all of you uh, uh, from chitrasingha foundation tripura we organize talk shows every week on topics of person public interest this is our episode number 12 and uh, today we have with us um goromangi singh moirangkem uh, who is an accomplished uh, sports person i welcome him welcome sri goromangi singh moirangkem uh thank you so much uh, it's my pleasure to be here namaskar and i uh, again welcome uh, gormangi um is uh, also good friend of mine taram navachari chitrasingha foundation tripura degi and just to set the context for today's show um we all know that uh, the tokyo olympic 2020 has just got over the Indi- uh, the indian contingent has ended up winning seven medals which is highest ever medal tally for us which is actually a great success story for entire country for a population of 130 crore it is like a medal for per 18.5 crore people However, lots of euphoria has been generated because of this achievement, highest level achievement, I would say, especially on the pros- prospect of revival of our hockey. We thought this is just the right time to talk about creating a better sporting ecosystem in our country. That is why this week we have chosen this subject, and subject is titled. how can we become a sporting nation from being a sports loving country the reason is that most of indians actually end up and enjoying you know watching sports but we hardly participate we thought one one no one could fit the bill of being the guest for today's show then gormangi singh wadan came he is not only an accomplished sports person but he possesses one of the finest brains when it comes to understanding sports development in india gormangi singh moranthem was born at a village called sekmai at the outskirts of imphal the capital town of manipur and he moved out of his village and stayed at very young age to be professionally trained in football and afterwards he became india international player in a long cherished career gormangi ended up representing india 70 times for the senior team and in terms of india cap in the world's most popular sports which is football his name figures only behind the legends of sunil chetri bajung bhutia and climax lorenz regarded as one of the best central defenders to have played for india ever gormangi singh moirangkem is into coaching now so i once again welcome to our show 
Mr. Gomangi Singh Moirangkem. And even though you know you don't need any introduction, but for the benefit of some of our audiences, uh, I would request you to say some few words about you and your family to start with. Uh, first of all, thank. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here on the show. Uh, I think, uh, as you mentioned in the uh, last when I spoke to you, that uh, it's going to be like a very casual, very open, uh, straightforward uh, conversation on on sports in general. Uh, so I'll just introduce myself very quickly. Uh, that I'm Gaurmangi here. I played uh, football for about like 17 years. Uh, as a professional uh, in various clubs in, in the country and in, in, in the I League and in the ISL, uh, and also played uh, in the national team for, I think, for many years. And uh, it's been two years that I, I hung my boot, and now, now I'm, I'm into, into coaching now. I'm with Bangalore United, uh, and I'm, I'm working here uh, for the last two years. So my career, uh, or rather my life has been uh, revolved around football for the last 20 years. So everything start and end with football itself and my life in life, uh, life in football in general. And also, uh, again, uh, I come from Manipur and, uh, and I, uh, I was born and brought up in a small, uh, small town called Awang Sekmai, which is about 20 meters, uh, 20, 20 minutes away from uh, driving from, from Imphal and the, uh, I am the eldest uh, among the four siblings, and I have my brother and my two younger sister. Uh, my so uh, I had a very normal upbringing, uh, like any other uh, working family, uh, because my dad worked. My mom is a uh, mom is a housewife, and the uh, yeah. So so everything was all about football again. So, uh, can we know how you landed up into football and how your career got started? Because I know that you started your international career at a very young age. So that itself is, uh, you know, a big achievement. Uh, I think uh, growing up in Manipur, it was not very difficult for me to uh, develop, the, develop the interest uh, to eventually like as we all know manipur is very much a sporting uh like there's a, the culture the the, the, the culture of sport, the sporting culture is very strong there as we all know in manipur so uh like after school like any other kid growing up uh i get to see uh, all many 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 young uh, boy or girls and also the adults uh playing most of the time playing football uh, in and around my town. So for me, it was easy uh, to slowly develop the interest and even uh, the kind of uh, that I, I, I feel like I want to try. And that's how uh, it was easy that I, uh, that I already introduced to the game uh, at a very, very early uh, age. And then the, I was uh, fortunate uh, to watch it sometime around, I think when I was in my class nine, uh, there was an open trial from Tata Football Academy in Manipur, so I went and participated, and I got uh, selected uh, and also in, uh, and, and invited to to again come to Jamshedpur for the final uh, for the next round of trials. So since then, I never looked back. So uh, it, uh, so it, so that's how I have started uh, playing football. Uh, so we know there are uh, many players who have come from Manipur, uh, you know, be it football, boxing, weightlifting, cycling, badminton, judo, in so many sports, uh, the, you know, sports persons from Manipur have uh, excelled. So how this tiny state with a population of only 0.23% of the national population uh, became superpower in sports and produced, you know, Olympic medalists like Mary Kom, Mirabai Chanu, uh, Nilakanta Sharma. So how you would explain uh, this, I would say, uh, in proportion to the national population, the huge achievement in the field of sports by a tiny state? 
I think, uh, as I have mentioned, that as we all know, uh, Manipur, uh, it's very much a sporting. The culture is very strong when it comes to sports. And also, I think it all started, uh, like, if I have to go back, uh, if uh, let, let's go back to the history, then even I'm talking about since uh, maybe pre or post independence, the Manipur was very much uh, like uh, maybe pre and post independence. Even the British uh, missionary, uh, the British missionaries or the soldiers, uh, they brought the game, uh, they brought the sport. I think that's what I got to learn uh, going going through some history. Also, how how the sports are very, the culture are very strong in Manipur, the sporting culture in Manipur, and the Again, uh, so we have been playing the sports for a very, very long time, and also other factors. The other factors are because Manipur again, uh, like even if you talk about our uh, ancestors, I think uh, just be, uh, because we don't uh, like when, uh, like I don't know how to explain this, but. Like our ancestors, ancestors has a very hostile uh, upbringing, hostile lifestyles. This was I'm talking about in early age. Then sport was always uh, some form of entertainment for us because, uh, uh, because like um, like television or any other some uh, passive form of entertainment came very late uh, in in Manipur. So if you look back, even today we have some. Uh, traditional festival like Yaoksheng, where sport is very much the mainstay there. Like we have Yaoksheng, Yaoksheng festival, where we play all form of sports, not just football, but we, we play boxing, we play a lot of running, uh, athletic, uh, so a lot of, lot of sports that we play. So I think it's very much part of our culture from the very beginning. Uh, so it's a lot of factors, like I said, uh, not just uh, how it happened. I think uh, we can, uh, that will be another debate altogether. But I think it was very much part of our growing, uh, part of our tradition, part of our culture. So that helped us, uh, like for all of us, in in all of us, at least in our uh, early age or in our teens, uh, that we some we somehow uh, involved in some form of sports. And uh, eventually, uh, uh, that's how uh, I think we all play the sports, and it, so a lot of talents are there, and uh, uh, so and also f sports has become like if you are very good in studies, definitely you are looking for your uh, career uh, in, in 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 education. Then uh, even sports also today uh, you can people even the parents are very confident today to. Uh, even support their children and take up if the children come up and tell them that they want to take up the take up any sport as a as a career. So I think uh, that is uh, that is how uh, uh, the culture has been uh, in Manipur. So it is not an accident. It's not a surprise for to see that today. Even we have uh, even the recently concluded Tokyo Olympic that we have two uh, two medalists uh, from Manipur. And I am very confident that going forward there'll be more uh, there'll be more more uh, uh, sport person uh, will be will be coming off from the state. So generally, uh, are the parents and the society uh, in particular in Manipur uh, more accommodative towards sports? Uh, can we say like that because? See, you have lived in many places because of your professional career. You have lived in probably Kolkata, Goa, Bangalore, Delhi, and many other places. So I'm sure that you will be the right person to give some kind of you know comparative analysis about Manipur society or family members being probably more accommodative or more sensible towards uh, the sporting needs of the children on, and the general atmosphere over there. Uh, I think the, uh, it's changing now. Uh, very much it's changing. Earlier, I, even when I started, this was early 2000. Uh, it, even for my parents, when I, I remember when I went up to my dad uh, one morning, said that I wanted to consider uh, football as my career. Even my dad was a uh, little apprehension about uh, about my decision because even uh, I think I, under, I understand him today when I look back because even he was not so sure about how uh, how he is going to support me uh, because he has no clue about 
uh, like about sports in general, how I'm, how when I said that I want to, I want to make football as my career. So it was apprehension, but uh, in my ways, at least my parents, my mom in particular was very supportive, and my my even my father uh, doesn't mean that he was not, he doesn't want to support me, but that he he was apprehension because he doesn't know, uh, you know uh, how he is going to help me or guide me uh, through and through. Uh, but eventually, in the beginning, it was I won't say it was tough, uh, but I have to do a little bit of convincing uh, because uh, that that I I wanted to uh, I wanted to go now. I'm done with my. I just gave. I remember I just I just gave my class tenth uh, uh, board exam. Then I was having this break. So luckily, I think it was a very good timing for me that I got the trial uh, to attend uh, in in Jamshedpur. So even my dad came with me. My father came with me to Jamshedpur and you know see through the trials. So. In my case, yes, it was a little, uh, you know, not easy uh, in the beginning to explain them. Uh, and it's going to be hard. It was a big, big gamble for me because some 15, 16 years old, uh, just coming up to his parents and saying that uh, they wanted to, uh, that I want to uh, become a football player and want to make a career from football. So it was not easy. So I, I and when I, I also remember many of my friends, uh, when, uh, when they uh, maybe, they they didn't ha they didn't had the support that I had uh, from my parents. So many of them I remember uh, they uh, they live uh, they decided not to uh, not to pursue uh, football as a career or any other sport. So they ended up being uh, you know pursuing the uh, pursuing their academic uh, career and today they are working in different uh, different workplace. So uh, you know there are different different stories. Like I being maybe fortunate that I someone managed to convince and you know follow my dream. Uh, follow uh, something that I wanted to I wanted to do. So for that, I think I'm very fortunate and thank you, uh, thankful to my to my parents. So the case are different. I think we, uh, but things are changing. I would say earlier when uh, when I think it was understandable because even uh, in in football in general, even in in in, in India also, that now you, you could see the ISL is there, the ISL, the I League. So there are a lot of uh, players. Earning a decent salary, earning decent decent packages. I know, uh, you know, a, a, a career of a football player can maybe, if you're lucky, you can last about 12 to 15 years. So you have to do everything that you can during that uh, short period of time. Uh, so it's not like where you get a job and you will be, uh, you know, you have the security to work till 60 years. So it's not like this. So understandable for any parents to have this little bit of uh, hesitation or even apprehension that you know what will happen. So I think, uh, but eventually. I would encourage uh, even many parents, uh, of course, any children who wants to take up the game, any sports it can be. Today, we, we like, you know, just recently concluded the Olympic. We have so many, uh, at least, you know, Olympians who are doing well for themselves, uh, at least. Uh, so, sport today, I think uh, you can you can consider as a, as a career, not just uh, like, but make sure that you continue. And any children today, now, uh, if they're watching us uh, on on this on this chat, then I would I would say that even for the parents, it's important that they follow, uh, you know support them if they want to at least try and pursue uh, sport as the career. But at the same time, make sure that they don't uh, they also uh, simultaneously uh, working uh, uh, working uh, simultaneously they are also going to the school and making sure that they are uh, pursue continue. With the academics because eventually if you couldn't make it uh, because it's not going to be as easy as what we like to think that not everyone's going to make it to the top level I, not everyone's going to become olympians not everyone's going to represent the country so at some point if they, are, they continue uh, with with the academics that will be something they can fall back uh, so since they like sports they want to stay close to the sport so definitely they can they can work they can work in the desk job but in the sport department they can they can do a lot more they can finish that you know sport management uh, so they can be uh, the people working behind the scene as well so that's a lot of uh, not just so if they, someone wants to be in the medicine but they can be a sport medicine they can be a doctor they can be a physio they can be a nurse but they can if they like to uh, then they can they can work uh, in the sport uh, industry so even i think uh, not just like we like cricket is huge in our country so you you it's not just the one uh, who played uh, you know on the pitch the players but you have you need other you know people working behind the scene as well so i think um, if you have the talent uh, if you see the your uh, children have the talent i think i would say that uh, you know it's a good time to play sports in the country as well but yes uh, you know there are the risk factors there are something that you have to calculate but uh, yeah
continue pursuing the sport at the same time make sure that you are also not uh, not taking it easy when it comes to academy make sure that you finish your degree you, you have your uh, even uh, at least yeah, complete your studies that was really fascinating and heartening to know because i'm sure you are talking about a time when it was about uh, 20 25 years back i know yeah. back back then the situation over manipur was not so conducive as it is today yeah. we did not have we did not have too many airlines flying out of uh, india i mean there were not uh, it was the sector was not privatized fully uh, yet yeah. yet you at a very young age took a decision defended the decision at uh, your house uh, in family and then you moved yeah. out uh, and i'm sure at that point of time yeah. somebody in a family thinking about going out of northeast itself was like going out of the country yeah yeah so i mean it was yeah yeah it was it was uh, it was difficult even in my case like i said uh, i have to do a little bit of convincing for that i'm very thankful mm -hmm. to my parents because they somehow mm -hmm. i managed to convince them uh but as you said uh i think it's a it, like places like uh manipur or any uh northeastern states uh uh because the opportunities opportunity is much much lesser than uh you know that we get in in the metro cities so i think for any parents what they want is a security and a very stable job for their for ch children i think that's what for any any uh working uh, parents would uh think and even that's what uh, they do today when uh, having a stable job either you become a doctor or engineer or lawyer which is very fair but uh, but things are changing today and the uh, you can have a very respectable uh, job even you know through through sports uh like yes the winners not everyone's going to be a winner it's not going to be as easy as like i said mentioned again uh, mm -hmm. that it's going to be hard but uh but yeah uh if you have the talent why don't you i mean we're going to live life once and if you have the talent why don't you pursue it mm -hmm. but i'm not saying that you need to you need to make sure make sure that i think now uh there are some college uh, there are some who are very who, who are ready to support uh you know mm -hmm. sport persons or who are ready to understand uh, that the schedule the difficulty the training hours so they even uh, they might even ready to support you give you give you extra uh, hours of uh, you know like classes when you're away from your uh, competition or training so if you want I, I'm sure that uh, I think you will always you will always uh, find find a way mm -hmm. uh, so it's a good time to play sports uh, not just cricket or not just football or not just boxing uh, like I think all the sports, uh, the, the, I, I could see a lot of changing uh, happening in the last last yeah last about ten years. Mm. Good to know that, and no wonder that uh, you defended your decision at very young age at your family and ended up defending Indian football defense for so many years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, we will definitely get into this uh, big debate about uh, the sports culture and also our Olympic achievement. Uh, just before getting into it, uh, just to lighten up the uh, atmosphere over here, um, uh, can we know what is your favorite Manipuri song? And Manipur. if you can just <laughs> sing at least a few lines of <laughs> that song or those songs. Uh, I I do listen, but I don't listen to not not like a lot of. Uh, but I do, of course. Uh, growing up in Manipur, of course, you listen to you ended up hearing to a lot of Manipur songs. Uh, but I don't. I'm not very good in singing, so I I I, I think I would step back myself to singing but yeah if i have to share some of the my uh, favorite songs i don't know uh, this is not the all new not the new songs but old ones uh ranvi thauna lapna tamna raba uh which is one of my very favorite songs even my wife loves it so i think both of us really love this uh lapna tamna raba ranvi thauna uh song uh lapna tamna raga and you know so it's it's just nice song and also uh, i think from the uh, little uh, not very new but i don't know how many of you listen to this band called the koi and the bidai uh, from 
Koi, uh, which is also very uh, nice. Uh, and I like the song. I mean, there's a lot of good songs uh, now, but and also fun songs. I think Yaoksang Yaoksangi song. I don't know who can uh, uh, that Sadan Da Sadan and the say don't. Then uh, I think uh, which is Balaga Kanoga uh, that 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 song is also very nice. So I'm sure we all have a different uh, choice of uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this a little yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. So the not that, songs, yeah. Not that I know uh, uh, much about uh, Money Good or. Uh, the songs over there, but uh, I'm sure there are many you know, followers of uh, Manipuri movie and Manipuri songs over here yeah, in the yeah. platform. Specific we have from, lot, we, yeah, we have a lot of, yeah, yeah. Mm, sorry, sorry. Tripura and Silet and Kasar, there are uh, members here. So I, I'm sure they would agree with your choice. I definitely, for, for me, I definitely like Koi and all their songs. Okay. Okay, yeah, Koi songs are very nice. Even, yeah, uh, yeah, they're very nice. Even Bida is like, I think it's very nice. The music is very nice. Uh, but yeah, and uh, for fun, I think the Yaoksang song, I think it's one of the uh, like very fun song. Uh, the Yaoksangi, I don't know if you know, if you know the song, <laughs> uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> So uh, coming back to the main topic, mm -hmm. so if you see, uh, up particularly after Indian economy got, uh, you know, uh, freed from all the red tapism, in last about three year, three decades, we actually had a sustained economic growth rate, and thereby okay. we gradually became uh, the fifth largest economy in the world. Mm. And uh, that has put India in, uh, you know, in a much higher, you know, orbit than it was uh, many, many years back. Hmm. And then in sports, uh, what has happened in last, you know, few decades, probably, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, is that hmm. lots of technological interventions have started happening. Hmm. And in many ways, uh, those technologies have become even playing ground for you know, all mm. the nations. It's not that mm. one particular technology is exclusively available for one community or one country. Although, mm. I mean, there are technologies which will, will be very expensive for probably poorer countries. Mm. But yet, technology as such is available. So, mm. uh, in that kind of a context, I think uh, it has become more like uh, even playing ground today, probably in sports, uh, globally speaking, than yeah. it used to be for, say, 40, 50 years back. Yeah. And that is why probably we have seen a small country like Kosovo actually got so many, uh, you know, medals uh, in this Olympic also. Yeah. So uh, I really wonder that uh, thereby that uh, when it comes to comparison with countries like the China, the China or the USA, the Netherlands, the Great mm -hmm. Britain or Japan or Korea. We are quite far behind hmm. the sporting, you know, uh, nation. Yeah. And uh, one must also not forget the fact that till 1980s, yeah, uh, in terms of sporting exploits, uh, India was almost at par with China. And hmm. now, you know, where China is, China is actually competing for the top position in Olympics. Uh, yeah. You know, in in few uh, previous Olympics. Yeah. So, what do you think that uh, as a whole, as a country, we actually lagged behind and we could not catch up? Where, where uh, you know, we went wrong? Uh, I think it's a big, big question that uh, is a big, huge question. I don't know who is going, who can give us the right answer to this, because it, it cannot be just one line or two line answer to this, because uh, uh, I think, uh, like, you know, it's my personal opinion here. And my understanding is, yes, as you mentioned uh, very clearly when uh, you uh, came up with this question about that uh, we are we wanted to be the big player when it comes to the the world economy, uh, to the art and culture, uh, in the politics. Uh, we want to have a big say now. Uh, in like India, uh, like economy wise, we are doing this and uh, and we have we want to have a say in almost everything in the world affairs. So which is very fair. I think it's a it's a, it's a way it should be as a country. 
so now question comes to sports. So where do why do we lack uh, so behind? And uh, that's a huge question now. But my understanding is uh, we need to be a little hard on ourselves now. We can't be yes. Let's celebrate uh, our uh, our sport person. Uh, they work hard. We can't under under undervalue what they have done for us in the last uh, last last hundred years of uh, Olympic histories, Olympic history, and the coming uh, the, the the cutting it short. The short is, I'll just give I'll just take one or two examples now here. So we'll talk about this was just before uh, Tokyo Olympic. We had twenty eight Olympic medals in total for a huge country like India. That is a, that's that was our total. But okay, in Tokyo, we got seven, which was the highest in the history of Olympic, and we got 35 today. But 28 was before the Tokyo Olympic. And, but let's not about being, we are not trying to compare here. I want to, the reason I want to highlight is one of the all time athletic Olympians, one of the all, all, uh, all time greatest Olympian, that's Michael Feld, who was a swimmer, the, the, the American swimmer. He had 28 medals, 23 goals in, in total, 28 medals in his name in five Olympics. So all I, all I wanted to highlight is how those are serial winners. They win after, you know, year after year or Olympic after Olympic. So what, what can we learn from them? That is my whole. So what, what, what someone like some individual like him, the preparation, the process, what went like for him to win that many medals with one individual winning the 28 medals. Yes, I'm not saying that we can change everything overnight here, but it has to be hard, like very hard question on ourselves as a whole nation. We are very happy. I think our sport, our Olympians has done so well, winning seven medals and we are, we are very happy. We are very proud of, but like we are, we, I think we need to be aiming high, but where do we start now? So those are something that we need to reflect on that. Those serial winners, we need to learn something from them because those guys, I mean, those Chinese, those Americans, those British, they are not waiting for us. So if we are continuing, if we are going to continue with the same pace that we are in today, then I, don't, I think it's going to take, I don't know, it's going to take decades, it's going to take years, maybe under 50 years for even to go, even think about going close to them. So now uh, that is one part. So let's, my question is, can we, what can we learn from them? C can we even bring some people from there, even here, uh, not for the sake of bringing, but try, let's try to bring the right people. Even if it's a foreign coach, not necessarily that foreign coach, a foreign coach can win as a medal. It's not that, but it's the thing, people, let's see that who are the people who associating, uh, associated with, with these people, the winners, can we, can we, can we, uh, can we learn something from them? And, you know, and, and let them come and train with our coaches here. So that will we'll come back to those uh, part later. Then the other thing is, since you mentioned about the sports science today, so that's one I'm talking about the mentality, like the winning mentality, the serial winners, those winners, they have so many winners there. And and it's been happening like a, a routine thing for them. So for us, even to win a gold medal, it's become, it, it, it's it's like, a, it's, it's like a big deal today. But for them winning like 39 medals, 43 gold medals, it's just like, it's a settled thing, it's a routine thing. So can we, so what can we learn from them? So that's one question. So that mentality part, like, you know, we are here, I think we as a nation, sometimes we go there to participate. I don't, at times we feel that we wanted to win, but somewhere we don't feel that confident that we can win. But that mentality, that winning mentality is something that we need to, we need to, we need to learn from them. We need to learn from them. We need to discuss, we need to find out, not maybe they will not tell us, but we need to find out exactly what, 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 what's, what, what are the preparations that went through for them to win that many. Uh, medals. That's one. Second thing, I think one other individuals I want to bring it up here because I was reading up on uh, because of my work. I was reading it of one uh, individual. Uh, his name is Tim Grober. I don't know how many of you, how many of you know about Tim Grober. Uh, Tim Grober is the uh, personal trainer of uh, for 14 years. Personal trainer of Michael Jordan. Supposed to be one of the greatest. Uh, supposed to be one of the greatest uh, all-time like basketball player again. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to highlight or talk about the greatness of Michael Jordan. No, we know the how great, how great, like he, 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 he is a legend. Let's leave it that. But the question here is, who are the people helping him to become that greatness? 
to become that legend or to become that great all-time basketball player because all his success was not an accident so it was there there are so many people behind the scene who are working to help him to be at his best every day every week so that is what i was going through and i was quite impressed with this tim grover who is an indian american working with michael jordan for 14 years and what we do today about technology we do about the gps we do about the sports science today we do so many things today so it's easy today for us to even in any sports for us to uh, do a little uh, like uh, to monitor on say uh, like in, in our team sports i'm talking about i come from football so in our uh, team sports it's easy for us to monitor with the gps today like we have a training session so i we can uh, after the training i can just have to plug out and just you know just check on one player's how, like number of distance distance uh, that cover like you know how many kilometers that uh, you know the, the boys covered today or number of sprints number of fatigue level number of uh, and also about you know the live heartbeats uh, and a lot of other sports science related stuff so today it's much easy but what i'm trying to tell is what we are getting to do what we get to see uh, or what we're getting through uh, the sport uh, uh, to the sports science today this guy tim grover was doing it manually back then 30 35 years back for michael jordan and michael jordan's success was an accident so what we are talking about today that what we are getting to the sports science this was like even 35 years back when before even there was no television so even from uh, I, I, it was clearly said uh, tim grover you know i was quite impressed when he said that Earlier, there was no GPS, nothing. So even there was no television. It was like CD. So he has to back, uh, you know, always play forward and backward, and even count how many. If say for after the match, he count like how many times Michael Jordan jumped from his left foot or the right foot, or you know how many times he used his left, right. So, so accordingly, he can plan the session for the next day. So here, so the, the, here that the, the what I think take away from me for me is not how. Michael Jordan was successful for me is uh, their thinking was already so ahead. What we are trying to do today, those guys have done and have been doing since 35, 40 years back. That means their preparation, their thinking is way ahead of us. They are thinking for something bigger and trying to be dominant in almost every ways. So now if you're thinking to like, oh, you know, just planning, we have to like, they are not going to wait for us. They're going to keep going and we just need to sprint now. We can't be even thinking of planning and executing. And that's a sad part about our country. And I'm, we are very happy and I'm very proud being a sport person. When I, when, when I see like, you no know, medals coming for the country, huge respect for them, but we should be targeting a lot more, not just, not just the seven medals. Yes, we like to, but liking it, wanting it, it's different than do we have the mentality to win it? Are we prepared? Do we have the enough support on the pitch, of the pitch? The facilities, the coaches, in terms of the latest technology, do we have all the support to, for our sport person? Do we have the roadmap to, you know, so a lot of questions need to be answered. Uh, so that is what I, I do feel. Uh, my, uh, like, we talk about this sporting uh, system now. So we need to create some space, uh, like, a, for sports in our academy system. Because right now, I think it's more like we are pushing so hard that we talk about a sporting culture. Uh, but without the support of the system it's going to be hard so we take just an instant example of us for example like it's a everything start in their school right from school if you are good then you go to the college you are still representing your college from college you go to the uni from uni if you are good enough to be part of the professional teams whether you in the nba or even in the american football and any other games so everything is you are you are very much part of the academic system. In that system itself, we have a system where it's well placed and created structure for the sport people who, like the, those skillful individuals, if they want to pursue sport as a career. So it's, there's a pathway for them to follow. So it's much easy. So it's not a surprise if they have been dominating for the last, I don't know how many decades, the America, the US dominating the medal tally in the Olympic. It's not a 
accident. So it's the same goes for the China, for example. Like, you know, they were with us almost on the same part till maybe early 80s. But now at least they, they, they set out the plan and they execute it. And they're there today. I mean, for the last five, six Olympics, they have been right up there. I'm on the top two, three, fighting against the Britain and USA. So uh, the question is like, it's a, it's a big question for us to ask. Is what do we do? Why are we lacking? And uh, it's more about no planning. It's no time to plan. It's just time to action now. Just do, do, the, do the job for us. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a long, uh, it's a long, I can go, I'm sorry that I, it took it long, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Extremely, extremely, extremely use, useful, uh, you know, insight from you because uh, see only a sports person who has dedicated entire life of theirs uh, like you. Uh, can give this kind of in this kind of insightful you know analysis and it is very important for us as a society as a country to understand uh, you know while we celebrate our achievements not to forget the constraints as well yeah because i was uh, during the olympic i was also reading the fact that uh, a country has its name hai, uh, san marino mm, yeah san marino san marino jiska you know, uh, uh, the country's area is only uh, 61 square kilometer. Yeah. Or population hai 34,000. Hmm. So, me jab mera apna uh, native place ka saath relate karta hoon. Hmm. So, ye actually San Marino country jo hai, wo mera gao ka aspas, char pas gao mila ke jitna population hai, jitna area hai, uska barabar hai. Hmm. Like hmm. it's equivalent to Kamalpur, Mani Bhandar, Durai Shibari, Hala Hali. I'm telling in, in context of my village, <laughs> Gormagi, uh, Salema, hmm. Borodotma, Sankir Bazar. You know, six, seven villages together will be 34,000 population and 61,000, yeah. 61 square kilometer. In your context, yeah. it will be Shakmai and Kangla Tombi combined together, probably. <laughs> but yeah. ye, uh, countries, you San Marino. उन्होंने इस ओलंपिक में पांच एथलीट्स को भेजा था एंड पांच में तीन तीन ने मेडल जीता है हम्म और इफ यू एक्चुअली कंपेयर यू नो पार पॉपुलेशन मेडल इट इज ऑलमोस्ट लाइक मेडल फॉर एवरी 12000 पॉपुलेशन या सो आई थिंक द पोटेंशियल इज ह्यूज इफ वी यू नो सी द केस ऑफ countries like San Marino or uh, Kosovo. Kosovo yeah. is generally not only because of fighting and, you know, bomb blast, etc. But yeah. the fact that uh, even being economically, you know, backward country, they have excelled yeah. in sports. So that is why I actually we have kept the title of this topic, uh, uh, sports culture, uh, not yeah. so much about in investment or so much about money, probably. But yeah. probably, you know, the bottom line for sports development is to create an ecosystem where sport is respected and sport is looked upon as a, as part of life. Yeah. I yeah I completely uh, agree on that uh, because let's uh, I mean since I, we come from Manipur I come from Manipur uh, so from our state. I was very happy, uh, happy in a sense because I think that was a big step. I remember the, our chief minister when uh, in one of his uh, interview, one of his uh, chat after the after uh, after in, in after the Olympic, when he was talking to, uh, I think Neil Kanta, he was talking to Sushi Life. If I'm not if I'm not wrong, yeah. When 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 he was speaking to uh, to those uh, you know athletes, I remember even those. Even Susila is working with uh, working for the railways. Nilkanta is with railways, but they, my, uh, they, they, they. When the city minister asks them that what, 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 what could uh, you know he, he do for them, uh, so even they said that they wanted to come home. They wanted to come home and stay, and try to help, uh, try to help uh, the next generations. But they like Susila, uh, like someone like Susila who, who has been part of the two Olympic. Olympics and the uh, you know the experience that will be very very beneficial for for the state and uh, this is uh, you know I'm just talking a little uh, it's not being biased but I'm just talking for the uh, like money state like Manipur because uh, the first Olympian from Manipur uh, 
like Tamo Nilkanth, like uh, for the hockey, uh, he uh, it was 84. So in the last 35, 36 years, we have uh, about uh, we have Nilkamal, 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 sorry, yeah, we have uh, Tamo Nilkamal. So we have. We have a total of 19 Olympics, Olympians so far in the last uh, 36 years. So that means the talent is there. So we cannot deny that, uh, you know, there's no talent. and But the talent is there without much, much, much support. Uh, uh, like, without much support, this individual has, you know, it is, has done, like, like comp competed at the highest level came back home with the medals. I think uh, we just need to support them. And I, I'm, I'm happy that uh, even yesterday when I saw somewhere, when I read about that, they were offered a job in the sport department as a uh, as an assistant director, deputy director. And I hope that they can utilize that position. Uh, you know, I'm happy that they are in the sport department today. And, uh, you know, with their experience and expertise of uh, being away from home, competing at the highest level, and that definitely will uh, their their experience and their their their, their ideas, their you know, thoughts will be helpful for the next generation. So, so I'm hoping that if today we have 19 uh, Olympians, I'm just hoping that why should there's no reason for us to uh, believe that uh, why shouldn't we be producing more? Uh, so in the coming Olympics, uh, in the next four years time, I I'm, I just hope that we should have we should have more numbers. And uh, uh, that is the only way. Uh, that is the only way, and the the only way to even encourage more uh, more uh, more children to take up the take up sports, or even at least consider uh, if you know if they have the talent, they can they can consider sports as their career. Even it will be an, and some kind of encouragement for the parents also. If tomorrow a children uh, their children come up to them and say that uh, we want to consider, so at least when they see that. Already, the sporting uh, icons in the in the in the state are doing well, are uh, are in a, a well like a well taken care. They are, they are taken care of. So that is one part. So one, I think we have to consider this one. It, so it should be also the case where if you win, after you win, the the government will only acknowledge them. That is also I think it's not very fair at times because uh, let's reflect on what um, Mirabai was. Uh, Mirabai had done uh, after after he won. It was very overwhelming, to be very honest. When I read about that, he invited some 150 truck, uh, uh, you know, tr truck drivers. Uh, he invited, uh, you know, she invited them home, and at least, you know, like show them the respect that because I think we all will accept this that uh, the first point of support in in the in the growing up or in the in the beginning of your career in your during your struggles during your challenges it's not always the government or it's not always any organization come to uh, come to your rescue or to your support i think the first point of at least the, the best thing the first point of support is always so your your friends or your family or your near or dear ones so even for someone like uh, for uh, like mirabai for her to go to the training every day even honestly speaking, i have done that as well <laughs> because at times you have a morning and there's no uh, even the, the the public transport the say the public transport start at six o'clock for example and i have to be uh, i have to be in infal say by six o'clock then i if i don't have my vehicle or my my father is not ready to uh, or he's busy to uh, reach me then all those you know then we even we're looking for different any means of transport that can take me to or reach me before the training uh, schedule so I think it was a very overwhelming, uh, you know, I think it was a great gesture from uh, from Mirabai also to remember, like, you know, those people who who helped, like, her in, her in her, you know, beginning of her career, like, when no one was there to even notice or not notice her struggle. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it as a, as a you know, as a government? I know government cannot do everything, but what can the government can at least look now, at least acknowledge that those are the issues. So how much we can help the, those basic uh, in, the, in the initial years for any aspiring football or aspiring sport person. Uh, so those something that I think we need to note. Yes, that they, they, they deserve all the accolades today. They deserve all the, uh, you know, the respect and they, they earn it. It's not that they deserve, but they earn that. You know, they made the country proud, which is very fair. And what the government has done so far is very good. But the thing is like, 
Uh, I think that is one part, but we need to understand that in their initial struggling years, how can we support them? Like I said, again, the, the first point of support is always from your near and dear ones. But if your near and dear ones are not in the position to support you, then what do we do then? Then probably the, uh, the that he was he will leave the even he leave the uh, chances of even he giving of uh, or she giving of uh, you know his or her dream is very high. So places like Manipur, with the the kind of uh, the in the different sports, so many talented people coming out and representing the country in the highest level. In, so I'm sure that there's a lot more other which we don't know. So I, yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, I just hope that uh, we just, I hope someone, I mean, I know that you have been doing a lot of work in Manipur, not just in Manipur, in the Northeast, in general, uh, for different sports. You have been very, very supportive uh, all these years and uh, whatever, I mean, we could as individual as well, if we can do and at least bring out and highlight all these issues as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that uh, it will, it will help, it will help. Definitely. I think there is no denying the fact that uh, raw talents are there aplenty, not only yeah. in Manipur, but in various parts of the country. Unfortunately, yeah. actually, those talents are more available in far flung places. Yeah. Places which are beyond the reach of, yeah. uh, the, of the mainstream. So yeah. we'll get into uh, this discussion further and uh, deepen our you know, analysis on how to become more uh, sporting nation rather than sports loving country. But yeah. just to lighten up the atmosphere, um, Gormagi, I have some qu quick fire questions for you. Mm. Uh, these are related to your favorite sport, which is football. Uh, quick fire questions. Huh? Okay. Which is your favorite club? Uh, uh, yeah, Liverpool. I follow, not my, yeah, I follow Liverpool. Yeah. Okay, great. They are doing great these days. Yeah. Uh, and who is your current favorite player? Uh, my uh, what favorite is it? Who is your current favorite player? Current Among the current player. players, who is your favorite? Uh, okay, again, Liverpool, that Van Dijk, uh, the Dutch big giant uh, center back, okay. Van Dijk. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, Van Dijk uh, for the moment. Yeah. Current players. Yeah. And what is your view? Who is going to win the UEFA Player of the Year? De Bruyne, Kante, or Jorginho? Their names have been just you know, announced. Yeah, I think it's just amazing. Both three of them, the midfielders, crazy. I mean, uh, like the best, probably the best players. Uh, but I cannot. I uh, I just want Kante to win. Let's put it that way. Uh, Kante just he is just. Like the 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 hard work, the the work rate is just amazing. Uh, yeah, so Kante, mm -hmm. I just want. Uh, I know even all three of them deserve to win, no doubt. But uh, Kante, uh, I don't know. Just that, uh, just I like the way he play. I mean, he's he play for four people. He run for four people. <laughs> yeah, I hope so because I think uh, his contribution for you know his clubs uh, winning yeah. the Champions League was extraordinary. Yeah, it was extraordinary. When we talk about Georgino, then even Georgino was amazing in the Euro. Uh, mm -hmm. They have done so well. But like I said, even De Bruyne, probably mm -hmm. the best player, best midfielder in the world today. But all three of them deserve it. But Kante, just that, uh, I don't know, just the way he is, just a personality, he is, uh, I just want him to win. That's all. <laughs> no, 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 there's <laughs> no reasons there. No, no reasons there. <laughs> Let's have a consensus between you and me on Kante. <laughs> so yeah. one statistics which I would never forget uh, probably for long, long you know, years is in the Champions League final, the most duel won yeah. Yeah. in air in the yeah. entire match was by Kante. Right. Although he's just he's just five point six, yeah. <laughs> five point six no. inches. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just but he's it's like not a, that, it's not that it's not that he just covered geographically more areas, but he even covered the year, so that was really amazing. He he doesn't uh, let's put it that way. Yeah, he's 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 just good. He's very good. <laughs> 
Okay, next uh, um, is who is the most promising Indian football player right now, according to you? Promising. Okay. Uh, in the last season, uh, like a couple of them who, who broke to the national team, uh, like Suresh from Manipur uh, for BFC, I think uh, has done very well. Uh, you know him a little personally also. I, I do believe that he will go a long way. Thora Dhaka Khaya was maybe last couple of years back when mm -hmm. he was not getting the chance to play. But uh, he has learned the hard way. So when I last spoke to him also, and I was happy that he has done well uh, for the national team. Uh, he has done well for the club also. And uh, yeah, uh, he's uh, one, uh, again, very hardworking, sincere, uh, you know, boy. And sometimes, uh, uh, like, you know, so he has learned the hard way. So I don't think so he will give up his place that easily. So everything mm -hmm. that uh, he has achieved in the last one or two, three years, uh, mm -hmm. he fought for it and he earned it. Mm -hmm. So he knows that uh, I don't think so he will let it go easily. So I would like to see him, uh, you know, going, you know, further, further, uh, you know, in, in his career. So, yeah, there are more other names. There are many names, but yeah, just uh, he's, a, he's someone that I, I want him to go. Yeah. He was a emerging player with Harvey. I think, yeah, just year season, AIF emerging player of the year with Harvey. And uh, yeah, nice, nice. Okay, mm. let's hope so. So yeah. So, uh, sports me, life me, or laugh me. Dhaka khana bahut zaruri hai. Dhaka. Dhaka. That is the that is the that is the moral of uh, the story uh, which you have said. Yeah. So anyway, coming back to more serious uh, discussion on becoming more, you know. Uh, sporting nation. Uh, yeah. Do you think that you know sometimes we, in the celebration also when we achieve, we make yeah. you know, achievement in the uh, big uh, forums and uh, uh, and our sports persons uh, you know come up sometimes without with unexpectedly you know good results. Um, yeah. As a society, we even don't know how to celebrate it and how to sustain it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. no, why I'm asking? Why I'm ask, I am asking is I am coming from two specific, you know, examples. It may not be the data base is not very large, so thereby yeah. cannot be a kind of um, uh, generic conclusion. But see, we have produced only two Olympians so far who have got medals in two consecutive Olympics. Otherwise, yeah. it has been you know hockey in consecutive Olympics, but it is a team game. But I am talking team. about individual individual Olympic winners. Yeah. Uh, except Sushil Kumar and PV Sindhu this year. Yeah. No other no other sports person actually achieved um, medals in two consecutive uh, you know Olympics. Yeah. Second uh, in terms of uh, you know what do we do when you know someone achieves a big thing uh, in a challenging you know uh, um, games like Olympic games um, can be you know uh, given as an example uh, like exactly about five years back, when from my state, Deepak Ormogar almost, uh, you know, got a bronze in um, the Rio Olympics, and yeah. missed by a whisker, and she ended up uh, being fourth. Yeah. And uh, when she came back to her uh, state, I think it was 22nd August uh, 2016 only, exactly five years back. Yeah. He was given a, a public reception by the state government, okay. but uh, you know the state government declared uh, chutti for all the educational institutions of the state. So I thought, you know, if you want to if you want to celebrate your sporting achievement, rather you say all the you know students in uh, educational institu institutions. To at least spend two hours time doing different kind of sports rather than chutti <laughs> declare So that is why I'm saying, do we actually, as part of our you know sporting culture, I'm not in particular you know singling out any specific community or state or you know any association here. But I'm saying generally, do we lack the understanding about you know even how to achieve, uh, how to celebrate our achievement? Uh, when when we really uh, get into podiums, yeah. Uh, I think you have every right to uh, 
you know that's your opinion like is you you had the experience where uh, yeah, observer i i am being just an observer yeah i mean i, like I said again we all are uh, say uh, like you are you are a fan of all the uh, our, like sport like heroes or the icons even i am a big fan of all these all not just olympians but someone who has who normally who who does a good work who does uh, we are a, you know because we follow like you know some of the successful people right and uh, as you said that when these individuals uh, from your uh, particular like like the kamaka like you know when uh, she came like home uh, you you you're talking about about two two uh, two winners that's pretty there were two winners uh, belong from uh, belongs to different uh, different uh, states and one state like the government came out in full force and promising uh, you know for pv sindhu the you know his uh, her participate promising her uh, even you know uh, to start preparing for the next olympic you know that she came back with a uh, silver uh, in the previous in 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 rio so the government like coming out in full force immediately that also even after rio saying that start preparing for tokyo that the government will give you all the support and be ready for that so i'm sure that that must be a very uh, encouraging uh, for 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 pv uh, for pv sindhu uh, so who is in the case of uh, dipa wasn't there uh, so i am sure that uh, i think uh, there's nothing wrong uh, i think we call, we all can learn from each other even as a as a government as a as a chief minister from one chief minister to the other chief minister i think there's nothing there's no shame i i i do believe there's nothing shame to learn about it okay uh, why uh, you know let's say andhra for example and uh, how come so even the our uh, you know respected uh, you know cm uh, tripura uh, cm maybe could have done something similar uh, maybe that might put like you know even uh, for depart no, no, I, I, i was not i think the state government in tripura also did lots of things and they put lots of equipments and yeah and they did not keep anything any stone unturned to make yeah. sure that dipa makes uh, qualifies for the next olympic i was not talking about generally about the state government and i was talking about generally as a society yeah whether we also fail to value the achievements yeah and the need of sustaining those achievements so ek yeah. bar mil gaya to bahut khushi khush ho gaya and then it's generally sense that ek bar mil gaya naam ho gaya then kahani khatam no that that way to story ho raha hai na that's i think that's a story this i mean uh, i'm not jo sahi hai to sahi hai galat to galat hai so yahan pe i very like i said again i you know maybe doesn't make sense for me to even talk about Uh, about about pb or even deepa because i mm. maybe i don't know but if i have to speak about my particular state because i think i have some right to talk about my particular mm. state because mm-hmm. when i'm uh, like i was happy because uh, even someone like nilkanta openly coming out and telling our chief minister that you know even he wants to come back in uh, manipur and try to help uh, for the next generation even that mm. was susila even mentioned that so mm. from that co- from that context i was very happy that chief minister was coming out and even quickly mm. cabinet meeting karke uh unke liye that uh, you know job appointment nikalna and you know give them uh, give them a, a respectable you know positions there and in the sport department i was happy so that i hope they can play some role even internally now in the office and hope right. that you know knowing them the struggle the challenges so those individuals who have done well done you know amare liye you know those, those, they are heroes so i hope that uh, maybe thoda sa bias baat kar raha hu but I, you know there's nothing wrong working for the uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah there's not there's nothing wrong working for the railways but now yeah. since we are talking about if we have like like whatever five olympians represented in the tokyo then i would love to see another 10 or 15 or 20 in the uh, in the next olympic so that can only happen through like you know having that access to this individual who had the experience it's something mm-hmm. that mera bhi the, uh, the, the i i would jaisa maine thoda sa if i had on now i i i always dream at some point ki i would love to winning losing was one part but like i was part of the sub games uh, in islamabad you know uh, as a indian team ke liye then uh, i was uh, one time part of this uh, 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 doha that asian games so that winning losing yes that's a part of the sports we all are there to win matches but the environment da, that in the game village the whole uh, closing you know 
that, that's the biggest sporting event in the yeah, world. I, for, yeah. yeah, the Olympics is the biggest sporting event mm-hmm. in the world for the universe. Mein. So, Asia ke liye, uh, Asian Games, we can't qualify nahi kar saka, and I couldn't be part of, I, I couldn't have that experience of my life to be in the Olympics. Oh, kabhi ho nahi paya so, I would, there will be like some unfulfilled dream. Ho jaga. I, I, I doesn't make any, that doesn't, you know, but when I, when we have those individuals, then and, you know, then for us, coming back home, uske baad, I hope that they can guide more uh, mm. young next generations and having mm. the access to them. So when I saw that, that's very good. Jaysa, abhi, abhi baat kar hai. You know, our case is that we can't get to celebrate. So now, let's go to this hive, mein, women coming out and giving them the, some position. Pe karo abhi, aap lo kaam. And even making some, I think, Olympic, ka kya, uh, the CMS, you know, making something for them also, which is very good. Now, question is now the same thing that like Mirawai, like I have mentioned that, you know, I was very overwhelmed that he invited all the truck drivers. Uh, that is, the, that those are the difficult part of anyone who push, who wants to, you know, pursue uh, sports. So, so all I'm saying is not everyone can put in that good positions, but how can we as a, as a, as a government or as an organization, as a PSU, how can we uh, support them? At least identify the talent, the best talent. And also, a, I think the same thing that you get first, not frustrated. Uh, I mean, I think the word might be a little strong, but you wanted to do something and through your organization. And sometimes when you, because of the bureaucratic hustles, you get delayed with some of your work and you get like, you know, you feel like you don't blame the government. You blame, like, you feel sorry for the, uh, uh, no, I was talking game. about overall system, not particularly yeah, yeah. about no, no. men or yeah, yeah. system. Yeah, no, the, just in general. Yeah. I'm just saying that in right. general because yeah. whatever you wanted to do is for the mm. right course and the, with the right intention. And if you mm. get delayed for some reasons, for any reasons, mm. then what happens is, uh, uh, you know, it, it get uh, you're losing. Mm. Uh, uh, we are we are yeah. denying the opportunity for the for the young, uh, you know, players. Uh, you're the, uh, you know, those so, aspiring yeah. players. Yeah. So I think the parallel I can draw is, I mean. Yeah. Uh, making sports as part of our lifestyle or parts of our daily life. And one can probably give this example. If, you know, I know that uh, my daughter is going to appear in 10th exam next year. Mm. And for her, you know, good result, I have to ensure this, 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 these things. I'm yeah. sure that I will do that. But when yeah. it comes, uh, you know, for the priority, as a societal priority, I'm saying. When it comes yeah. to sports, probably, probably we are, you know, still you know far away to go in 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 that in that way. I was I, I was talking, yeah. but it was really interesting that you brought in the stories of uh, you know, um, Saikom Mirabai Chanu, Chanu and um, Nilakanta Sharma. They willing to go back and mm. hopefully contributing to create more champions from their own areas. Yeah. You know, we all know the story of Himadas, for example, from Assam. Yes, yes. She was a raw, raw talent. She started yeah. playing football without knowing that there is uh, whether there is a football team or not for playing for the country. Yeah. And he ended up uh, courtesy a good coach uh, in uh, athletics. Yeah. The same story goes for uh, Lalren Siami Mar. Yeah. Yeah. Part of hockey team, girl, uh, women's hockey team. Yeah. She was with a raw talent in a far flung village far away from Aizol and her talent could be identified. And now, uh, you know, uh, incidentally, and probably a good part of the story is that even Lal Rim Siami, Mar, even uh, Lovlina uh, Borgohin, yeah. they have been offered good jobs uh, by the state governments. And more than that, they are willing to actually stay in their respective states uh, among the communities and contribute further to create more champions. True. So that is really, 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 you know, nice sign because yeah. uh, I'm sure that given a chance, uh, Gormangi Singh Varan, them who actually struggled 25 years back, the kind of struggle he went to uh, go through, he will always try to reduce that kind of struggle for a upcoming footballer if yeah. you are handling him in 2021 or 22. Yeah. So actually the discussion <laughs> is really, really going on very well. and. You know, your inputs are really, uh, really insightful. So mm-hmm. I just light, uh, wanted to lighten up again. And this time I have a uh, few questions for you. Again, uh, I will not call this rapid fire question. 
but uh, this is more like uh, you know your brain fail question your brain should fail to answer these questions that is the motto of putting these questions okay <laughs> <laughs> so my first question is who is your favorite manipuri hero <laughs> okay uh oh i don't know i mean uh, i think yeah most of them i know them personally <laughs> and uh, I, if i say one name i think they will not like me <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah uh, yeah this dasadananda is nice uh, you know i think doing well thara thara hanu jara ga sako and boy ye naha singh so dum yeah i think it will be difficult I, i'll i'll just avoid that uh, because okay. yeah you no know, yeah. but they all nice actors yeah i mean i'm very happy that uh, even i keep this is a topic so sorry that i'm just still divert divert it over because because every time when i meet them my conversation is like uh, their feel is also like sports only because uh. uh i want uh, the industry whatever i don't know much about them kabhi milta hai jab bhi hota hai to i say like you know i want i want their industry the, the manipur industry also to grow like like people in tripura people in assam people in nagaland people are, there are so many manipuri uh akhoi community mein hum na so you know like the manipuri songs other movies is such a pastime or such a form of entertainment that i think it gives you kind of you're relaxing kai oi bata da aduna they are doing a great job but i want them to because they are also in challenging moment mein chal rahe unka bhi and i just want them to establish in such a way that they also become a such a strong industry that they can continue uh akhoi dadum henaga kama hai dada keep continue entertaining us and also giving us lot of good songs good movies and uh i think they deserve a lot more respect and they deserve a lot more uh hidi uh, in the social structures that they uh, you know this a movie movie or art or culture they ha- have to have a strong uh, you know say and place for them also and i just i just hope that i i, I keep telling them i just wanted to uh, whatever the weekend uh, i can like you know i think we should support them in the best possible weekend because they deserve a lot <laughs> <laughs> okay next whom will you prefer to have in your team biju biju ningambam or somalaisram <laughs> why why in my team which team <laughs> <laughs> anything whether football team or cultural team <laughs> okay uh they are uh, like i think both of them are great actress but yeah uh, because knowing soma i just go for soma i know, know knowing her okay. also so yeah what would be your preferred destination gangtok or silong uh yeah both a nice place but i'll i'll go for silong silong la jungle garden Okay. Uh, no, not ever. <laughs> Gangtok okay. is like you know, it's far to drive, but good place. <laughs> okay, so if you were to be offered only one choice to pick, okay, will you go for Yongchak or Usoi? Yongchak, any day. Usoi also good, but Yongchak, Yongchak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now coming back to the you know. Uh, main topic um do you think that in near future uh, you know the players from manipur and particularly north east i am talking about this region because you are of late more popular, more you know familiar with this region do you expect that there will be more medals coming in in from olympics yeah i don't see any reason by, that we should should... it's from manipur and north east Yeah, I don't see any reason uh, we shouldn't believe. Uh, you know, I mean, we represent the country. We are Indian uh, at first place, but again, coming mm-hmm. from this part of the region, uh, northeast again, uh, I don't see any reason that we all shouldn't believe that uh, today, if we have how many of the nine of them were there, right? Uh, so if the, then, uh, I don't see any reason that we should. Uh, there should be more, more and more. And like you said, like also you also mentioned, uh, like I mentioned that uh, even some of those Olymp, uh, some of those winners. uh would like to come back home and work closely and i don't see uh, i think uh, they will only help us bringing out and producing more more uh, more talent so we saw first olympian from mizoram uh, you know and like from tripura everywhere from assam uh, sikkim uh, with all these individuals winners champions coming back home and 
you know, like showing that keen interest to work closely uh, with the next generations. They will, uh, and it's not that they are all, some of them will definitely, other than I think Mericom, maybe uh, she would say, like she, would, she might hang, his, uh, hang a boot, but uh, hang a globe, but uh, the rest of the, they will be uh, definitely be part of the next Olympic. And also I'm sure there will be more new names come up uh, in the next Olympic. Yeah. I was deliberately asking only for the Northeast. I'm sure, you know, overall mm -hmm. as a country, we will okay. have yeah. many more champions, especially coming up from some of the yeah. hotspots, uh, you know, in South India as well as North India. Particularly yeah. in certain sports, we are we have become superpower, uh, you know, yeah. over the period of time. Yeah. So I just wanted to get your uh, feeling for uh, for the Northeast and particularly Manipur, since you have been yeah. based there for some time. Yeah, now. Manipur. And, yeah, Manipur. I said again. I think uh, I uh, just very proud to be, uh, you know, belong to that uh, particular mm -hmm. state uh, because it's uh, helps me a lot in terms of not just in many ways because sports plays a big role in one's I think developing as uh, as a human. Uh, you know, so uh, like I said again, I I'm very happy that uh, I last when I spoke to them also, like even to Neil Kanta, I was very happy that uh, he he wanted to come back and he's going to be there working closely. So I don't see any reason that uh, even they mentioned, even uh, Susila mentioned that uh, now it is even in the nationals, there are a few uh, players from Manipur come, uh, coming to the national games and who is, she was not very happy. So she said she want to go back and work closely. I'm sure mm -hmm. their, uh, their effort, uh, their sincere effort will definitely help. It might take maybe some years, but uh, there will be the good, good, uh, right people to guide. So I don't see any reason. Uh, yeah. Yes, we need more support, but I don't see any reason. Mm. Yeah. So probably we'll take one or two more questions uh, mm. uh, because we are running over one hour now. But before that, I would like to take uh, some questions put up uh, uh, by the audience. So Likla is asking, what would you like to say to your parents now? Oftentimes, children would like to pursue sports as their career, mm. but parents stay apprehensive. Okay. Uh, my advice is always the same. Any of you, uh, young boys or girl, you you think that, uh, you know, you have some skills uh, even before your parents notice it, but because, uh, through your uh, uh, locality coaches or senior players, or even through your school, a game teacher, if you know, they, even they encourage you that you do have some kind of skill, and you are a little apprehensive to go up to your parents. But I think no one knows better than you, your parents. I think mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you are the. You know, like I said again, you know your parents better than anyone else. So mm -hmm. if you go up with your sincere, not like you just give them a right reason. Go up to your parents, your dad or mom. Just explain them that this is what it is, and I want to at least try. I'm sure, I think 99% of the time, I think the parents will definitely, you know, think about it, understand. And I, this is, I'm talking purely from my experience after speaking to almost 100 of parents, if mm. even from Manipur today, when they call me or when they, they sit down, and some of them, they have no clue about sports. Some of them are proper, like, medicine professionals. Some of them are doctors, some of the engineers, or some of them are even politicians. They have no clue about the sports. But suddenly, they, the one of the boy or the girl came up and said, like, that I want to try so they are even ready today to give them at least you know one two years and see that whether they can really make it or they, do they have the skill and talent to to make it to the next level so i, I think uh, i would say 95 percent of the time the parents are ready to listen to you they will listen to you so but yes at the same time like i said in the very beginning also you cannot take it easy with your academy so make sure that you continue what you have to do your parents will like you to you know continue academy but at the same time they will always, you will always find a way. You think you have the talent, pursue it. Go up to your parents, speak to them. If, once your parents say yes, the problem is solved for you. Uh, they will be right behind you, supporting you, and try to at least achieve or living your dream. And uh, so I don't see any reason. I hope I answered to your question, Likla. Yeah. So thank you for your perspective. Yeah. And there are some comments. Uh, Muhammad Ansaruddin has written, thank you so much for this live show. Susan Power has written, I love the analogy of San Mario and Kosovo. It's food for thought. How far back we are in size of population. 
the pursuit of for the next medals begins now for Paris, France. What should be the plan or roadmap? I think. Uh, uh, thank you for your comments, Susanji. Sudip Biswas has written Subhasha Avinandan Railo, and Basant Sinha has written excellent program. Thank you very much for your word of appreciation. Now, um, uh, I think we will just take up two more questions uh, uh, from uh, our side. So uh, I, I know that you are also trying to do something for the communities over there in uh, Manipur, especially uh, for the children uh, who uh, who uh, want to you know pursue their career in football. So can you tell a little bit about your football initiative, which is probably I'm believe I'm believing community driven. Yeah, no, it is. It is because uh, like we have this cargo football training center. Me and one of my partner, uh, we have started like this some two years back. Uh, now the COVID, because of the COVID, we've slowed down. Uh, so what happened is, uh, uh, like, I think I've I I have seen uh, like like in because I've been traveling all around and you know living in different cities because of my job. Uh, what I do feel also, I think I feel that I can I can at least uh, give back something that is at least encourage not deny the opportunity if they want to play uh, the sports. So this cargo football training center, I have like uh, like three teams, the under 12, 14, and 16, where uh, we got about some 150. This was like just a few months back before the lockdown, uh, and the the only reason was giving them the uh, giving them the opportunity, giving them uh, not just for the players. But I think it was also important uh, for the young coaches. There were a lot of young coaches who have done their uh, e-license, d-license, but they need to have a platform. Where do where if they don't? Uh, what's the point if you hold your degree, hold your licenses, but you don't have the any platform to to work at least to you know uh, like execute your talent? So so we got uh, six coaches uh, just working closely with the boys, and the uh, it's a very small novel course that we have started and they're just looking forward hopefully uh, my uh, something incomplete uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a kind of a little dream uh, for me that uh, you know put them in a right structure so I'm really working towards it trying to find some partners and also some sponsors and put them and uh, at least they can they can at least work uh, work to achieve uh, their dream not just the players but the coaches also so provide them the like quality training sessions what I have seen uh, you know, not just me, but I've been very much in touch with my other fellow colleagues or coaches. Uh, listen to them. What are the best way? What are the latest form of uh, training that is needed for these boys? So sit down with them, listen to them. And uh, what I have lived, what I have done as a player, at least I'm trying to give back whatever I have uh, I've understood about this game and all my understanding of this game. At least try to pass on uh, this is how it is, how to be a professional footballer. Like, you know, it's not just about uh, making it there, but it's about also staying there. Like, can you, it's not about just playing for one season, no, but can you stay there for like 10 years, 15 years? Can you do it like, you know, up to year after year, can you win more? So the desire, you know, I just try to pass on uh, whatever that I can. Uh, and also not just to the players, but that's what I do with my coaches also, speak to them on a very regular uh, basis. Uh, so that is what I'm doing. Hopefully, at least uh, it's not easy uh, because running a football academy or a football club, it's not easy. It's a very small thing that I've started and, uh, yeah, looking forward, and uh, I am hopeful that yeah, I will, I'll, I'll make it. Yeah, I'll make it there. So thank you for giving this perspective. Um, lastly, uh, for the you know aspiring athletes uh, for from in the entire country. Mm. What would be your advice to them? Uh, uh, my advice to all the young boys and girls is um, it's important because now it is sports in general in our country. Uh, it's it's a, it's a very hot subject. Uh, and the, I know everyone wants to become, you know, uh, or be successful in what you are, uh, you are dreaming or you are at least try to make it to the to the to the to the next level 
So to make it to the next level, wherever you are, you are in the school, you are in the village, or you are in the locality, uh, wherever you are, and you are looking, you are striving to make it to the next level. I think one thing or two things. There's only two things that can take you there: this hard work and this discipline. Uh, and we talk about talent. I think it doesn't make sense to talk about all this hard work, talent, skill, uh, because if you don't have this, anyway, you cannot make it to the next level. This, if you're not working hard, then no. But the question is here: it's about can you identify yourself from the very beginning, your strength and your weakness. What what are you good at and what are you not so good at? If you identify that, and in any sport, whether it's a football, whether it's a cricket, your definition of understanding the game, I think it's a little. I know this is a little tricky, but your understanding of the game and what the definition, how you define the sport, how you define cricket, or how do you define football? So that's or how you define boxing. So that's one. Second thing is, if you believe that you have the skill and talent, yes, then what's your strength and weaknesses? So have this in mind. So start thinking about hard work. You have to do that. So it doesn't make sense for us to even if for me to talk about it. Hard work. Yes, you have to. You know, that's the last thing that you have. That's the least thing you can do. If you're not hardworking, if you're not disciplined, you can't play the game anyway. So you have to have depth. So when you meet. Some of the, if you want to be among the achieve to be in the elite, like sport person, as you climb the ladder, you will meet individuals who are strong, who are quick, who are faster physically. So you have to be as good as them. So we don't have to really talk about it. So question is, can you be better than them? So for that to do that, you need to know yourself, identify that what is your strength and what's your weaknesses. So that is, I think, is the most important, because all those things, hard work, discipline, you have to have that. So let's not talk about it. But you have to. If you don't have that, then no point of discussing having this conversation. Okay. So I think that uh, that's the that's the key. Uh, I know a little. I'm just getting the little detail now because I don't want to talk about discipline, hard work. You have to have that. It, but you need to understand your what your and uh, what sort of food, what sort of what style of game that you want to play what works for you mm -hmm. you need to figure out that the sooner the better for you if you can do it like you know at the early age by 4, 12 13 14 you'll be good when you turn 7 18 you'll be in a much better you know place and understanding of the game yeah so i don't know if you guys are getting it if not we'll do it again i'm sure i'm sure everybody is getting it especially when it is coming from someone who has lived through this this life and it's yeah. so important to actually uh, you know make uh, this thing understand that you have to be on your toes to be yeah. better than the others every day every moment yeah. every so, day every day that you live yeah. that life uh yeah. like for any sports i think uh, if you're lucky then you live this life mm -hmm. for about 12 to 15 years if you're lucky if you're not injured and mm -hmm. uh, if you're lucky uh so like you said again if you work hard of course you you make it to the one level mm -hmm. then the question is uh, can you stay there because there is another hundreds of people who want to take your place. Mm. So it's about you have to prove every day. You have to prove to yourself that I'm better than them. I'm better than them. I'm better mm. than them. So uh, it's a little you need dedication, hard work. You need that. I mean, you, without that, you are, you're not going anywhere. So it doesn't make mm. sense. But important is knowing who you are, mm. like what's your strength and what are you good at and not so good at. Mm. So then I think you need to try to throw away the not so good ones and the good one should be the identity of yours, of who you are, and just work mm -hmm. on that and make yourself so strong that uh, you know that no one can beat you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, that's where how I look at things. So I hope that I might it might be a little useful for anyone who is watching now. So the final question, which I could not resist to ask, this is the final question of the evening: Is you have played for India in seventy-one matches, international matches. Which match would be the most memorable for you, and why? Uh, uh, the, I would say the first time, uh, the first, the uh, uh, like I I I came through the all youth career, like you know playing for the national team in the youth, but uh, uh, playing for the first time for the senior team was I think different. I remember uh, I I met my debut uh, in Delhi for the Nehru Cup against Syria, uh, so. 
uh, it's just funny at times, honestly speaking, uh, not being not being anything. Uh, like you said that, oh, you played 70 times for the country. But to, to be very, very honest, I today I I'm not playing. I I you know I'm retired and um, uh, I can look back and since you come up with the numbers, I can oh did I play that many numbers? Yes, fine. But when you were waiting, fighting so hard every day in the training session, waiting for that one moment, like you know, to make to make your debut, and when you do that, you don't think about how many m matches you're going to play. You're only thinking about I played my first game. Then you think about after 90 minutes, you think that okay, have I done enough? Have I done enough for the manager or the coach to consider me, you know, for the next game again? So you are literally living from match by match. You are not thinking about the 70 games, 50 games, 30 games. You are literally living. Uh, it's just funny. So you are always concerned about one game, one game, one game at a time, one game at a time. If you play well this game, then the coach will think about selecting you for the next game again. Okay, second game, then the third game, the fourth game. But you're not thinking about 70 or 80 games. You're thinking about one game, one game. So literally you're living your life, you know, based on one game, one game, one game. So, <laughs> but that one game, the first game, I think it was uh, something that you feel like you waited that for so long. Uh, like you work hard in a club, you know, play the play in the club, win some championships, uh, be consistent, uh, and uh, you know, fight every week, perform, and uh, win the call up for the national team. So wh when you do that, when you did that, like you, you feel, you feel. I think yeah. So this was again Syria, my first game. I think it was uh, more than anything. I think it was it was it was something very important, and uh, I still hold very very close to to myself. <laughs> So oh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your time and valuable, you know, insightful analysis about uh, how mm -hmm. we can become a more uh, of a sporting, you know, nation rather than sports loving country. And I'm sure your inputs will help uh, in long way, uh, at least to some extent, uh, uh, us becoming, you know, more uh, yeah. serious nation when it comes to sports. We also yeah. extend all our, you know, best wishes for your cargo football initiative, as yeah. well as to your uh, coaching career. I'm sure yeah. you will do very well there as well, like you did as a player. So yeah. thank you very much uh, for your valuable time uh, with uh, Chitra Singha Foundation. And to all other viewers and audience, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. Stay tuned. We will come back again next Sunday for another program. And uh, we need your support. Uh, and hopefully through our program, uh, you know, some people will uh, be benefited. Uh, uh, if not materially, at least, you know, intellectually and in terms of knowledge gaining. So thank you very much uh, to all of you. And uh, look forward uh, to see you again. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. Money. Yeah, thank you so much, Bahamita. Thank you so much. All the best for the yeah for the Citizen Foundation also. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.